Hi, it's Mary, Queen MLV. Talk to me Tuesday on November 5th, 2019. And again, I have two things to show you. They're similar, but um, <clears throat> don't look that different. But the process is different to me, and here's why. They're whole cloths. And if you haven't seen or, or done a whole cloth, it's where you take a um, whole cloth, a whole piece of fabric that is not pieced, it's not, it has no applique on it, it's just a piece of fabric. And these can be gorgeous silks that are, you know, hundreds of dollars to, to buy a 60 inch square of silk. Or, um, in my case, because I don't want to lose or ruin a piece of silk while I'm learning this process, I'm using sheets. And um, also because I want some added um, puffing in the um, final design and because I want them to not be too hot so that they can be used all year, I also plan to use wool batting. Um, Hopefully, on one of them, I'd like to use bamboo for a summer quilt, but wool batting on top of a um, cotton or cotton blend batting will give you that extra puffiness when you're quilting. And so, all of that is, is stuff that I am not using on my practice pieces. I'm just using two sheets and scrap batting, or I don't like polyester, but I've got some, um, I really don't have any super cheap batting that's big enough so I'm using just um, you know um, what I have basically and um, anyway the the idea behind the whole cloth is that the quilting itself is the design and so um, I've seen some beautiful ones with some contrasting thread which really brings out the detail but also shows every little missed stitch and I've seen some with like silk ones you can use silk thread you can use um, a sparkly thread you can use um, things that that really add to the design and things um, but most of them and the and the the ones that really catch my attention are the ones with a matching or almost matching thread. You don't want it to be so matching that you might as well have used clear. You want it to, you want the quilting to show, but in my opinion, the, the, go, the look I'm going for is not one where you're saying, hey, look at this quilting. It's like, hey, look at the whole picture. It's got this design on there that you can see, but isn't just, you know, red thread on a white backing so um although there's something to be said for those two when you have the right pattern anyway <clears throat> to get familiar with this process because it's a different thought process when you put it on your machine you're not sewing in rows you're not putting blocks together you're not doing anything that i have been doing in quilting so far you are um creating a design starting in the center and it's almost like um, this there are really three more things I want to teach myself on my long arm at this point there there'll be more but there there are three that I'm really excited about and, and trying to get into one is the whole cloth one is um, oh the um, dream big. I want to do a dream big or two. Um, I accidentally got two. I ordered one from fabric.com and I ordered a Nova um, print and they sent me two different colored um, big dreams instead or dream bigs and I decided just to keep them and it was a I lost about two dollars in the transaction but because the note cost a little more than I paid for but that's okay I, I they're they're ones blue ones teal love them um, so I'm probably gonna I'm going to do at least two of those but I feel like once I get the concept of the um, and some practice in on the whole cloth in the dream big which scares me to death because uh, I don't free motion um, is going to be easier for me and I'm just dying to get one of those done and then the third thing is going to be back to my um, um, peanuts quilt and 
that's just once again in in my mind trying to get out and i've got i think i have it figured out now the designs i've done i've designed the quilt it's it's the making it on the long arm that i think is going to be really fun for me once i get this process figured out anyway those are the three things i really want to learn next and i like i said before i finish these something else will come along but the whole claw uh, um the Dream Big is so similar to a whole cloth in that you start in the middle and then you go out from there basically in rings or squares or something till you get to the edge of your whole cloth. Well, um, there are a couple of, couple of little, you, it, it's not as easy as it seems and I knew this before. When I was before I was tackling whole cloths, when I was just looking at the dream big, there can be some shifting issues because typically on a quilt you do a row, and even if it's um, even if you're starting in the middle for whatever reason, different borders or something, then you roll up and you do a row, and then finish that and then go down. Well, with the whole cloth, you can be moving the quilt up and down on your machine more frequently and each time you're you're um, taking the risk of the fabric moving a little the other difference is unlike quilting just an edge to edge where it just does the whole row and if it doesn't match up with the row on top or below it by an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch you can't even see it on the whole cloth all of these stitches touch each other or or you know say say you're doing an emblem in the middle and then a circle around it and then a circle around that they can't be off you're gonna see if you have a circle inside a circle you're gonna see and also you're not you can't do a, a 30 inch circle in one run and so it'll be in three four pieces and so if you have a circle that isn't touching itself all the way around it's going to show because the stitches are what you're looking at so um because of that you have to baste it which i mean i'm used to basting edges you have to base this thing in the middle so it doesn't move and then you have to you know of course get it real straight which is really easy i don't you know the <clears throat> placemats thing was really a channel lock working um learning experience for me and um I, you know channel locks I'm, I'm very good at those are easy peasy and that makes sure it's on there very straight but just even you you get it you get it basted down and you get 30 inches from your center and all of a sudden you've got this extra fabric in there and you're like what do i do do i put spray starch on it and let it contract and hope it doesn't expand in the wash or do you you know move that basting out knowing that you're stretching your thread and what's happening to your um your batting and your backing at that point is it moving with it is it you know so there, there's a challenge to that and so i thought well what i need to do before i design one of these and get in way over my head is I need to do one that I know works and so Karen Hogue um, I might have mentioned her name before she has a pattern that I purchased and a design and I did start that well <clears throat> I got far enough on it to where two things happened one is I was confident that I could then finish the design and the second thing is I was also confident that because of the mistakes I was learning from it was never going to be a finished piece that I could use so I want to show you that so I quit and and it's on a sheet from Goodwill on top of a Another sheet from Goodwill with a pretty thin batting in it. Um, anyway, this is, I, I'm not sure, it, it's green and it's got gray thread on it. And so I'm not sure how much of this you can see. But here's the top of the design down to the middle. Out to the edge. So, you know, it, it's just a piece of cloth. 
And on the back, you can see the stitch is better. Now, I didn't trim any threads or anything, and I was rushing a little because I, by the time I realized I wasn't using this, I was just not caring about the threads on the back too much. And I was having some um, design problems with, with um, the stitching. But here's the design. And as you can see, it's the, I went in the center and went out, and then I went up. I didn't even go up to the top. So, um, and by design problems, it's a beautifully designed quilt, but um, there is definitely a learning curve on this. And, for instance, when you're doing this, um, and, and I didn't take the basing out, when you're um, <clears throat> doing like this chain, and you're only doing, you know, just my throat space is like... Um, You're, you're doing a piece of the chain and then it has to match up. And, you know, say, same with all of this. The center is easy. You do that all at once. You can't do it all at once. It depends on, and, and I had to resize it for my machine and everything because it's, it's, um, if I had a longer throat space, I could do more, which is always the case with the long arm. Um, so anyway, it's, but this is, um, I have a friend who's doing the same design and was doing it with me. She's up in, in um, Alaska, and she was having the same problems with this. And so we we worked through some of those issues together. Anyway, this was a really good learning experience, and I do actually have this design back on my machine right now. I want to finish it. And it is... Um, it is going just much, much smoother this time, and I'm happy about that. In the meantime, what I've done is, because this was the goal, I wanted to learn how to do this from this design, and then I wanted to make my own. Well, I am making my own, and it is almost finished. This is going to be a quilt for my um, boss who just retired. And um, this one I put on the pillowcases that match that sheet set. And so um, what happened here... This, this is not something I can just turn into a pillow or a placemat. It, it was just literally I didn't want to unload and reload two more pieces of fabric or one more piece of fabric on my machine to, to practice them more. So I practice all of my individual designs on two halves of a pillowcase. Um, so they are overstitched. But in the center is um, his initials, RMC. And then it's surrounded by this oval. And then, see, now he, now don't look at this part yet. We've got the, the oval with the lines in it. And then we've got two rectangles stitched out. Now this part, by the time I got this on the machine and done, these, I couldn't stitch off four of these at the same time without moving it. So instead of moving it, I moved the design down. So these four corners are stitching over the rest of the design, if that makes sense. So, and again, here's, here's the back of it. Um, still have this need to deal with that but but just one in this whole thing so anyway this is um see when that when these four corners are, are centered it's going to be prettier and then this is actually the seam I, I went right above the seam that I cut on the pillowcase so you got to ignore some things but the design came out very well and then on this other half of that pillowcase I tested my pearls and they're pretty, and they stitch out fine, but um, there's way too much overstitching. So actually, today I'm reworking my pearls, and they're coming along much nicer. And then this, um, it's stitched over another design, but this is the top, that the next round, and it is some hashtags. This is a um, Wasatch design that I... It was a semicircle, and I needed less than that, so I cut it down and had to rework it a lot to get it to work. This is a triangle that's going to be in a ring around it, and this is um, some micro stitching, and I wanted to make sure that this was going to stitch out okay 
um, because I, I had not stitched that tiny on my machine before. And with the better batting, it's, the empty squares are going to be puffier, but um, the micro stitching did beautifully with no stitching problems. It did take a little while, but, but that I'm happy with. So I have all my designs on here, and um, so the part that I have done so far, um, so far when I did this, stitched out just as I expected them, I and that was just so pleasing to me. So I'm confident that I can do this one. I then took that middle part of the design, went to the outer edge, which is maybe 65 by 80. And um, it is going to end up a rectangular. And I did the outside. And so I just had this little space between the center part and the outside to finish designing. I'll be ready to stitch that. And I do have a um, an image from my, excuse me a minute, I do have an image from my um, design software, Art & Stitch. <coughs> That's the other thing. I've had Art & Stitch since January, and um, I was trained on it. Love it. Understand the concepts. I follow it on Facebook, and I and I and I get what everybody's saying. But I hadn't registered it because I didn't have the time to learn a new program. I had just, you know, I went from Silhouette, which really helped me with almost no learning curve. When I went into EQ8, um, I had done some embroidery design in the middle. I'm doing all these different softwares, and then EQ8 was so easy to learn for me. And I have, you know, I it's my go-to. I just jump into there and, and can do anything I want to do on it. And it's what I use to design most of my things. But Art & Stitch is a design program that is in Vector, which isn't new to me, but um, you design an art and stitch and then convert it to either an embroidery or a, quilt, a long arm quilting machine um, design and stitch it out. So it, it's a little bit different from EQ8 in that you're actually designing the stitch design, not the quilt. So, and you can of course use the two together. Um, so anyway, one week ago, um, I registered my art and stitch and because my bus was retiring and I finally thought I would have some time and so I've jumped into that and that allowed me to do the um, whole cloth design and so typical of me um, my very first design in art and stitch is not making a heart hoping it matches up the equivalent of crocheting a potholder or quilting a potholder when you're learning my first thing that I ever crocheted was a quilt, the fir uh, an afghan. The first thing I ever quilted was a full quilt. And the first thing I've designed in art and stitch is a whole cloth, 65 by 80 inches. So anyway, that uh, that works for me. Um, I understand other people building up. I just I just started the biggest thing and, and learned each section as at a time as I go. And that seems to be a pattern that has always worked for me since I was a child. So anyway, um, I do have it designed and I will put an image in here, for, in here, here for you um, to see what I've got so far. And that blank space in the middle will not remain blank because it'll just poof and crinkle and the batting may not be safe and so I'm going to um, fill that in with something and I've got some ideas um, I just haven't found the right thing yet but you can see how it's going so far and when I get that part um, finished and then tested and and then I have to get my this one this no, my first one that's back on the machine on new fabric off of there um, then I will be ready to stitch my own hull cloth. So anyway, um, just those two hull cloths is what I've been working on for, for like two weeks now. So um, anyway, I'll put a picture of that in here for you, and you guys have a fabulous week. Bye.